This presentation is brought to you by the MFOA. Good afternoon and welcome to MFOA's Municipal Finance Internship Program Community Improvement Plans, Analyzing the Overall Benefits to a Municipality webinar. And now I'd like to introduce your presenter for the day. Aditi Goswami is participating in MFOA's Municipal Finance Internship Program at the City of Windsor. She is a graduate from the University of Windsor with an Honors Bachelor of Commerce concentrating in finance. Prior to joining Municipal Finance, Aditi worked in the manufacturing and also retail banking industry. Aditi serves as a committee member on the United Way Windsor Essex Community Impact Council. Currently, she is working on achieving her CPA designation. Thank you so much for joining us today and Aditi, please take it away. So a very good afternoon. My name is Aditi Goswami. I am the MFOA finance intern for the City of Windsor for the 2014-2015 year. My deliverable is based on community improvement plans, CIPs, and analyzing the overall benefits of a CIP to a municipality. In this presentation, a lot of the initial conversation is about the City of Windsor and the three actively utilized CIP initiatives in our city those being the Sandwich Heritage Community Improvement Plan, the Economic Revitalization Community Improvement Plan, and the Brownfield Community Improvement Plan. This project will assist with a full evaluation of the community improvement plans being done next year at the City of Windsor. This presentation may help interested parties who are already participating or want to partake in a similar initiative in their towns or municipalities as it will shed some light on the general CIP program and program measurables. So a large part of my role as an MFOA intern has been spent on completing a report which has its focus on evaluating the effectiveness of the tools used by the City of Windsor to provide financial incentives to businesses through the community improvement plans. The following is a breakdown of what to expect in the next few slides as we go along. At the end of this PowerPoint presentation, I am hoping we will be able to answer and provide explanations to all of the questions on this slide. First and foremost, what is a CIP? Secondly, why develop a CIP program? And finally, what are the ways of measuring the benefits of a CIP program? So I wanted to give you a quick overview of snapshot of my presentation on this slide which will hopefully tie everything together throughout my presentation and also towards the end. You may be wondering as to why of all things I would pick this very mundane photo to begin my presentation. The question can be, what can you imagine for this piece of land? What kind of improvements can you envision for this property? What goes through your mind when you are asked this question? There are a lot of municipalities may have an area such as this in their respective cities. This picture depicts an area which was once functioning as a former Shell gas station which sat vacant since 2002 and was later purchased by a private owner through a brownfield redevelopment program. Hopefully as I go through this presentation you will gain an understanding of the real benefits of a CIP. In this particular case, a brownfield redevelopment CIP. I would like for you to remember this picture as it will make an, an appearance once again at a later time in this webinar. As we go along in this presentation, here are the topics I would like to cover and achieve by the end of this webinar. This presentation will focus on the most important aspects of my deliverable document submitted to MFOA. Number one, how did we get to speaking about the CIPs and their individual history? So we'll be talking about the many different acts and also touching on the relationship between the strategic plan and the community improvement plan. Number two, the City of Windsor CIP programs. As mentioned earlier, the three main ones which are focused at the, at the City of Windsor. Number three, highlighting the success of five businesses which have used the CIP incentives to, to succeed in our municipality. Number four, measurement of CIP benefits and tracking sheet explanation. Here I will share a document which tracks the CIPs and their corresponding measures. And finally, conclusion. So in order to keep this presentation engaging and entertaining, we will be asking three poll questions throughout this presentation. These are simple questions to get a better understanding of what kind of information is out there for CIPs in the general area. The City of Windsor has both targeted and citywide CIPs. 
However, the current focus has been in regards to our citywide plans. If you have already implemented CIPs within your municipality, or if you are planning to, please answer whether it is primarily targeted or citywide CIP. Okay, so the poll's answer is largely targeted. So from the results, a large majority of you answered, answered targeted. This is like most municipalities. There is a specific area where the CIPs have been targeted mainly to benefit a proposed area in need of rejuvenation or could be an area which has potential for growth. Thank you. Thank you for submitting your answers. How did we get here? It is important to briefly understand where the original CIP initiatives came from. This applies to most CIPs in municipalities across the province of Ontario and specifically to the city of Windsor. So what is an official plan? An official plan describes upper, lower, or single-tier municipal council's policies on how land in your community should be used. It is prepared with input from administration and others in the community and helps to ensure that future planning and development will meet the specific needs of the community. The Planning Act. In order to administer CIPs in a precise manner, municipalities have to abide by both the Planning Act and the Ontario Municipal Act. The Planning Act sets out the ground rules for land use planning in Ontario and describes how land uses may be controlled and who may control them. The Ontario Municipal Act prescribes guidelines for municipal governments. Community improvement planning was popular in the 1970s and 1980s as a means to support and encourage neighborhood renewal and commercial area improvement. It had become an almost forgotten revitalization tool until growth pressures of the late 1990s led to interest in the development potential of brownfield sites. Section 28 of the Planning Act allows municipalities with provisions in their official plans relating to community improvement to designate by bylaw a community improvement project area and prepare and adapt a community improvement plan for the community improvement project area. Section 106, 1 and 2 of the Municipal Act prohibits municipalities from directly or indirectly assisting any manufacturing business or other industrial or commercial enterprise through the granting of bonuses. Prohibited actions include giving or lending money or municipal property, guaranteeing borrowing, leasing or selling any municipal property at below fair market value, and giving a total or partial exemption from any levy charge or free. However, Section 106.3 of the Municipal Act 2001 provides an exception to this rule for municipalities exercising powers under the provisions of Section 28.6.7 or 7.2 of the Planning Act or Section 365.1 of the Municipal Act. So here's a chart view of the broader CIP relationship. This diagram shows the relationship between the Community Strategic Plan and the Community Improvement Plans. In May 2006, Windsor City Council approved the Community Strategic Plan, which assisted in identifying strategic issues facing Windsor, alternatives for dealing with them, and a common vision to guide all future planning. It also involves linking with other municipal plans, business processes, and establishing a monitoring and annual reporting process. In 2012, Windsor City Council came up with the four pillars of sustainability, which supported the strategic plan. The four pillars are our economy, our society, our environment, and our government. The execution of the Community Improvement Plan can be linked to the objectives in the Community Strategic Plan. We will now move on to the second portion of our presentation and an in-depth um, uh, explanation of the Community Improvement Plan. So the following slides will explain the City of Windsor CIP programs and the explanations will give an in-depth information informative background on the community improvement plans. Uh, the City of Windsor has active CIPs, those being the Brownfield Revitalization Plan, the Economic Revitalization Plan, the Sandwich Heritage, Sandwich Heritage Revitalization Plan. For each of the following, I will talk about the incentives available and the objectives for each CIP form. So we'll be talking about the brownfield revitalization. So what are, brownfield, what are brownfields anyway? A brownfield is a former industrial or commercial site where future use is affected by real 
or perceived environmental contamination. The issue of brownfields can be a significant concern for municipalities from the perspective of the number of sites, amount of land involved, and potential for redevelopment of these lands. Brownfields can have real and significant environmental, economic, and social impacts on a community. In addition to the significant property tax revenues lost when industrial and commercial properties sit vacant, abandoned and underutilized, municipal governments must often dedicate police, fire, and other public services to respond to illegal dumping, vandalism, arson, and other problems at brownfield sites. Brownfield sites can also lower surrounding property values, create land use conflicts, and contribute to neighborhood deterioration. Brownfield redevelopment encourages intensification and the use of existing infrastructure and stimulates neighborhood rejuvenation. Brownfield redevelopment also benefits the environment by improving air, water, and soil quality and by facilitating more sustainable development patterns that can protect valuable green spaces and, and agricultural lands. So now for our second poll question. After discussing in detail about brownfields, this question targets the brownfields in your area. Would you consider brownfields to be an issue in terms of redevelopment opportunities for your municipality? If you could please answer yes or no to this question at this time. All right, so the poll answers have come back and a large majority of you answered yes. This tells us that there is still room for improvement for many municipalities which see brownfields as a cause for concern in their cities. We have seen benefits when development is done on brownfield land here. So thank you for answering that question as well. So the main objective is to promote the remediation, rehabilitation, adaptive uses, and redevelopment of brownfield sites throughout the City of Windsor in a fiscally responsible and sustainable manner over the long term. Other goals include improve the physical and visual quality of brownfield sites, provide opportunities for new housing employment uses and commercial uses, increase tax assessment and property tax revenues, improving the land use compatibility of potential brownfield sites with surrounding land uses, and utilize public sector investment to leverage significant private sector investment in brownfield remediation, rehabilitation, adaptive reuse, and redevelopment. Now move on to our next slide. The following are the grants and tax incentives for the brownfield CIP. The Feasibility Study Grant Program is a grant equivalent to 50% of the cost of an eligible feasibility study to a maximum grant of $7,500 with maximum one study per property. The Environmental Site Assessment Grant is a grant which is equivalent to 50% of the cost of an eligible environmental site assessment designated substances and hazardous materials sub survey and remedial action plan or risk assessment. The maximum grant is $15,000 per environmental study. The property tax assistance is a cancellation of municipal property tax increase and the education property tax increase for about three for up to three years. Uh, and the last one, development charge exemption up to 60% reduction of development charge payable on a brownfield site approved under the Brownfields Rehabilitation Grant Program. We will now move on to talking about the economic revitalization. On August 9, 2010, Council directed the Planning Department to begin preparing the Economic Revitalization CIP. That has two main purposes. One, to diversify the local economy by attracting new businesses that represent new and desirable sectors of the local economy. And two, to encourage job creation through the attraction of new businesses and or expansion of existing businesses into identified sectors of the economy. Here I will speak about a few of the objectives of the Economic Revitalization CIP. The basis and objective of the Economic Revitalization are the following. Some to encourage capital investment that create or maintain permanent jobs as well as short-term construction jobs that contribute to the reduction of the unemployment rate, provide financial incentive programs that are attractive to potential investors and corporate decision makers, but are balanced with expectations of city taxpayers and the city's ability to fund the financial incentive programs to attract investment based on the community's strengths and competitive advantages and support investment 
and development that results in an increase in property assessment and grows the non-residential municipal tax base over the long term. The CIP focuses on the following high potential sectors and targets the following. Manufacturing. The manufacturing sector includes companies engaged in the physical or chemical transformation of materials or substances into new products. The related activities such as assembly of the component parts of manufactured goods, the blending of materials, and the finishing of manufactured products are also treated as manufacturing activities. Automotive manufacturing. As a city highly invested in the automotive industry, it is a strong targeted sector which has its importance in the past, present, and future of this municipality. Many jobs which are related directly and sometimes indirectly to the automotive sector are important for keeping jobs here. The enhancement of this industry is important in the growth prospects of our city. Health and Life Sciences. The Health and Life Sciences sector includes those companies that produce goods and services related to the health sector. It also includes companies that are engaged in the production and distribution of pharmaceutical, biotechnology product or medical devices and or scientific research and development related to the creation of products, processes and services designed to improve human health. Also the renewable energy and related technologies. The renewable energy and re related technology sector includes those companies that produce goods or services related to measuring, preventing, limiting, or correcting environmental damage to water, air, soil, as well as problems related to waste, noise, and ecosystems. The sector also includes companies developing or marketing resource-efficient technologies that reduce material inputs, energy consumption, emissions, and waste when compared to traditional technologies. The creative industries digital media sector, the creative industry sector includes those companies engaged in the production and distribution of products and services that have their origin in individual creativity, skill, and talent, and which have a potential for wealth and job creation through the generation and exploitation of intellectual property. We'll move on to the next slide. Uh, the economic revitalization incentives. Here I will focus on a few of these incentives. Part of the same group, the business development grant program and business retention and expansion grant program are almost alike. The business development grant program and the business retention and expansion grant program is a grant equivalent up to 100% of the municipal property tax increase created by the project for up to 10 years after project completion. The project must create a minimum of 50 new jobs with the manufacturing sector or more than 20 jobs within any other targeted sector. The Business Retention and Expansion Grant Program is a grant equivalent up to 100% of the municipal property tax increase created by the project for up to 10 years after project completion. The project must create or retain a minimum of 50 jobs within the manufacturing sector or create more than 20 jobs or retain a minimum of 35 jobs within any other targeted sector. The Small Business Investment Grant Program is a grant which is equivalent up to 100% of the municipal property tax increase created by the project for up to 10 years after project completion. Businesses must have less than 50 employees if in the manufacturing sector or less than 20 in any other targeted sector. The investment must result in a minimum increase of 25,000 in assessed property. The Development Charges Grant Program is where applicants are successful in obtaining one of the above mentioned grants may be eligible to receive a grant to offset up to 100% of de development charges paid for a project. The Sandwich Heritage Revitalization Program, CIP. Old Sandwich Town is home to some of Ontario's oldest and most historically important buildings, but it has also been a dwelling place for some symbolic Canadian figures. Some of these figures include Alexander Mackenzie, the second Prime Minister of, of Canada, and Henry Bibb, a fugitive slave who, who initiated the first Afro-Canadian newspaper. In fact, Sandwich and the surrounding area became an established black settlement where thousands of freed and fugitive slaves took refuge from slavery in the United States. So centuries and decades later, the purpose of the Sandwich Incentive Program is now to revitalize the area by improving the appearance, re 
uh, retaining and attracting new businesses and residents to Old Sandwich Town area. The incentive program provides relief to home and business owners to not only assist in revitalization efforts to help stabilize the neighborhood, but it also helps offset development and design costs that may be incurred as a result of the higher design standard in Sandwich Town. Administration will review and recommend approval of each application on a case-by-case -case basis. Through the application and, and agreement process, administration will ensure that applicants are accountable and that high quality work is completed prior to receiving any grant. Generally, the majority of work being completed will consist of elements that have a long-term life cycle, such as exterior building improvements, that is facade and porch replacements, and interior renovations such as structural improvements that ensure the protection of the building for years to come. The Sandwich CIP objectives. One of the main goals is to maintain, enhance, and celebrate the historic character and significance of the Sandwich Town area. The objective is to attract a greater variety of businesses and cultural activities to Old Sandwich Town. The vision sets a goal of a more picturesque and publicly accessible waterfront. Finally, the vision sets the goal of being much more than a neighborhood, that is, a community that is physically, socially, and economically whole, whose residents and businesses are well connected to each other and the rest of the city, while still being a community that welcomes newcomers and reaches out to those in need. Uh, the, sandwich pro uh, the, the incentive program or toolkit includes incentives that can be activated by council one more at a time. It is the largest toolkit compared to all the other incentive programs as it provides flexibility and access to many different grants to provide relief to home and business owners to not only assist in revitalization of efforts to help stabilize the neighborhood and create a strong sense of place, but it also helps offset development and design costs that may be incurred as a result of the higher design standard in Sandwich Town. The incentive program also helps offset development and design costs that may be incurred as a result of the higher design standard in Sandwich Town. Generally, the majority of work being completed will consist of elements that have a long-term life cycle, such as exterior building renovations, that is, facade and porch replacements. I will be speaking to all of the, the different uh, grant programs. So the Commercial Mixed-Use Building Facade Grant Program is one where council may increase the maximum grant by up to $10,000 for projects that also require side and or rear facade improvement restoration, where the side and or rear facades are highly visible from Sandwich Street, and for property de properties designate, uh, designated under the Ontario Heritage Act. The Commercial Mixed-Use Building Improvement Loan Program, where is a no-interest loan equal to 70% of cost of of eligible interior and exterior building maintenance and improvement works. The minimum loan per, pro per property or project is $10,000. The maximum loan per property or project is $30,000. The Neighborhood Residential Rehabilitation Grant Program is a grant equal to 50% of the cost of eligible exterior building maintenance and property improvement works. The minimum grant per property is $2,000 and the maximum grant property is $15,000. The following slides will explain the CIP advantage in more detail. I have named this the CIP advantage as it will explain five businesses or companies which have taken advantage of the CIP incentives and have succeeded in doing so. This slide showcases five companies which have really taken advantage of the CIP incentives and used it to their best ability. In the following slides, there will be a breakdown of some of these businesses which explain how and in what form the CIP incentives were utilized and the gains which were made for their businesses, as well as in terms of financial impacts for the future of the city in terms of investment. Our first company was NEMAC. In 2010, the Corporation of the City of Windsor and NEMAC of Canada engaged in discussions related to the continued operations and retention of employees at NEMAC's Windsor Aluminum Plant. NEMAC's investment in the Windsor Aluminum Plant and retention of employee, employees exemplifies the purpose and intent for which this economic revitalization CIP was developed. 
specifically the business retention and expansion grant program which requires the retention of at least 50 jobs for manufacturing types. Here are the NEMAC indicators. The, you will notice the actual amount of grant provided, one of the higher amounts for a CIP, and the value of private sector investment leverage, and also to note $12 million in private sector investment leveraged was done by NEMAC. Uh, our next company or business is Windsor Glass. So established in Windsor in 1971, Windsor Glass has over 40 years of experience and it maintains an outstanding performance record that has earned them an, an exemplary reputation in the glazing industry. CGI boasts specialists in unique design solutions for custom-made building envelopes. And some of their notable works are the Pan Am Games Village in Toronto and the glass on the building as well as of the University of Windsor uh, Education Building for the, for, Schulich, uh, for the medical building. Windsor Glass applied for financial incentives under the Business Retention and Expansion Grant Program under the Economic Revitalization CIP. This was approved in 2011, and the program is intended to provide financial incentives to encourage existing business to make new capital investment. Go on to the next slide. The $2.1 million expansion at Windsor Glass was expected to increase the assessment base by $1.2 million, as can be seen in our tracking. third company was Windsor Star. The principal tenant of the renovated building, the Windsor Star, fell within the, the, the eligible creative industry sector under the CIP. More specifically, the production of digital me media, which is an integral and growing part of the Windsor Star's downtown operations, which was identified as a desirable use within the city's economic revitalization CIP. It is important to note the creative industry's digital media sector is currently underdeveloped in the Windsor-Essex region. The Star relocated its newsroom and sales and business offices to 300 Ouellette Avenue, Windsor, in November 2012. What was an aging and tired building housing the Palace Theatres was transformed by, transformed by the Mady Development Corporation into one of North America's most advanced newspaper offices. As can be seen through the Windsor Star indicators, um, if the Windsor Star falls in the creative industry within the downtown core, and it also meets the, num the total number of jobs retained and jobs created, which were 125. So our last company is Schlegel Villages. Schlegel Villages is Canadian owned and operated. Schlegel Villages provides high quality long-term care and retirement villages across Ontario. These retirement homes villages benefit from the Schlegel family having over 40 years of direct experiencing co-owning, managing and operating long-term care and retirement communities in Ontario. One of the locations is now in Windsor and this falls under the Economic Revitalization Plan. Schlegel Villages indicators. Schlegel invested $21 million for the Schlegel Villages Incorporated, which directly resulted in the creation of more than 250 permanent full-time jobs. This project was viewed as a catalyst project and received $500,000 in the form of a development charge grant. Sandwich Brewery. This visual on the left-hand side of your screen is a picture rendition of what the proposed building will look like in the future when all improvements and changes have been made to the property area. The repurposing of the vacant two-story mixed-use buildings located at 3230 and 3232 Sandwich Street into a microbrewery is an adaptive reuse that is a good example of the types of development envisioned for the community through the Sandwich CIP public consultation process and is consistent with the vision and goals of the Sandwich CIP. It serves as a good example of how to preserve and restore existing architectural heritage elements while introducing new materials that respect the architectural cult uh, character of the building. It also provides a use that is attractive and contributes to creating, excuse me, uh, to creating an animated street and also 
a place because the storefronts physically and visually open out toward the street. So half a million dollars was invested in the sandwich microbrewery, which is significant for the area. This adaptive reuse will help to serve as a catalyst, which will encourage additional interest in incentive programs while inspiring owners of other properties to find creative ways to repurpose or improve their own properties in Sandwich Town. This brings us to our third poll question. Sandwich CIP offers interest-free loans. Does your municipality offer low interest or non-interest bearing loans as incentives to redevelopment? Please answer yes or no to this question. All right, the results have come in and, at, uh, and the, the poll's answer is largely no with a 64% in, um, in, that, in that poll. So at this, this is not surprising as municipalities do not see themselves as lending institutions and by providing interest-free loans, there is an opportunity cost for all taxpayers to bear. So thank you for answering and participating in the poll questions. We will now move on to our next slide. Okay, so now we will move into discussion of measuring and tracking success of the CIPs of the City of Windsor. The measurement of benefits quantitative. For purposes of this presentation, we have selected the five, the following five quantitative benefits derived from the CIPs. The one being jobs, two, targeted sector, three, value of private sector investment, four, assessment growth, and five, grant payments. Just to look at the economic effects, it is important to focus on the jobs retained and jobs created information here because as a city, this is what we want for our citizens, a place to call home and also a place where people will want to live. The biggest factor then, of course, is jobs. As compared to other programs which create jobs and retain jobs, this specifically keeps things local. From our tracking, the CIP incentive program has managed to create 782 jobs and also retain about 1,345 jobs in total as per the businesses which have used the incentives. The relationship between both the jobs retained and jobs created is important in analyzing the effectiveness of the CIP program. In February of 2014, new unemployment statistics suggested that the unemployment rate in Windsor fell to 6.9%, the lowest in a decade as per the Windsor Star. With a tough job market in the city of Windsor, the promising jobs created and retained figures are positive notions. New jobs means exposure to new industries and tapping into a skill base which was not used prior to. While an increase in hiring in the city is an optimal, in, uh, optimal, optimal outcome, job retention can still be considered a valuable asset. Targeted sectors to showcase diversity. There's another indicator of economic growth, and in this case, the value of the economic development CIP is the ability to attract different sectors to boost business ventures for the well-being of the city. The always a diverse economy is always good for any city, province, or, con or country. As can be seen in many different economies, being focused on one specific industry for a long period of time can prove to be problematic, especially when everything around it is dependent on that industry. There's a good example, and that's the falling prices of oil in Canada and the effects on Alberta and the Canadian economy as a whole in recent months. The auto industry in Windsor is also one of the driving factors of the city's economy. Out of the 12 economic revitalization CIP approvals, the following pie chart shows the breakdown in percentage form of the many sectors which were targeted. The largest targeted sector is the manufacturing industry, benefiting the already strong manufacturing sector. The CIPs also promotes diversification into other sectors and encourages new businesses to cater to different areas of, of, of city dwelling. The impact of a variety of different industries means that our workforce is knowledgeable and constantly improving to better the city of Windsor as a place to live and a place to work. The value of private sector investment leveraged. The amount of money spent in our city is beneficial as it pushes growth in the city. When investing locally, the money stays here and is flowed within the city and many other facets in the vicinity. 
The spin-off factors are important to note. The importance of money being flowed through locally is important to the growth of any municipality. Through the CIPs, a total estimated of $89 million will be invested in new and expanding businesses. Increase in assessed value of participated properties. This graph shows showcases the top five companies which have had the highest increase in assessed value of participated properties. When there is an increase in private spending and growth of business, there is also growth in the value of property. The increase in value in property is important for a municipality as it increases the assessment base from which property tax revenue is generated. Grant payments. The total estimated grant payment amount was $9,753,000. One of the largest financial incentive components within each of the CIPs is a property tax grant. The ability to fund the grant is premised upon the previous measurement of assessment growth. With new growth comes the ability to raise more property taxes. While municipalities have the option to retain the increased tax revenue to support or enhance existing services or to fund new, new initiatives, applicants must be able to clearly show that if it were not for the financial incentive, the, ins the investment or development would not occur. Here are the final numbers and conclusion. In total, there has been 782 jobs which were created. A total of 1,345 jobs were retained. More than $8.9 million, million private dollars invested and over $9.5 million in grant payments given out. For the City of Windsor, the CIPs have been a very good indicator in promoting economic growth. As much as it is hard to gauge the total effects of the CIPs in a suggested area or municipality, it has only provided benefits here for the citizens of the City of Windsor. With generally, the budget impact associated with the majority of the recommended incentives is limited to foregone revenues expected by the City. However, they should be viewed as opportunity costs associated with potential benefits and revenues that could be realized in the future, including but not limited to a stronger, more diverse economy that can weather future economic downturns, more people being employed and having disposable income that circulates through the local economy, increased property tax revenue as a result of the grant-induced investments, more employed workers purchasing homes and the revitalization of areas of the city where properties are sitting idle. Ultimately, it, is a, it will be hard to gauge the full benefits or effects of the CIP program as there are so many factors which contribute to the success of a municipality. The true financial impact is difficult to estimate because the basis of the grant is that without it, the, dev the development would not occur, a fact which is difficult to, to prove. So as was previously showcased before in the presentation, I'm hoping you all remember from the first slide shown, the picture of the old Shell gas station at the beginning of the presentation. If not, here it is again. So today, there are four businesses operating out of this area, a beauty salon, a bistro cafe, spa, and a dental office. As can be seen, this is the same piece of land only after the Brownfield CIP incentive was used. It just goes to show how far it has come in the process and the success of the incentive program has to an area. After taking part in the Brownfield Redevelopment Program, there is tangible evidence of the development of this particular Brownfield area. The after picture showcases the improvements that are possible to an area where the incentive has taken place, and in this case, the Brownfield Redevelopment Program. The CIPs hope to and contribute as a nutshell to the area and surrounding areas of the city of Windsor. They create spin-offs in and around the city and help part of the contribution and success of the city as a whole by building new businesses and increase, increasing foot traffic and in turn investing in the future of the city. As we all know, successful communities create successful cities. This is an example, uh, a quote from Andre Abusali, who is the owner of, uh, of 2001 Duple Avenue, is a picture I just showed you before. Um, he says this project was a great experience and a great lesson on how we can make a great and positive impact on the surroundings that we live in. It was a great feeling that we were able to be the first to take advantage of the program and we hope that it is 
going to be the first of many to come. The outcome will be very helpful to us over the next 10 years, and hopefully others will take the same step for a better place to live for our kids. So this is a very good testimonial for us to know what benefits of the CIP have been for us. We'll now move on to the template, uh, which you may have access to. This template is one we currently use at the City of Windsor as an internal document to track our CIPs and to record specific information pertaining to each CIP recorded. As you can see, when a company or business is applying for a CIP incentive or grant, most information is gathered here to later form analysis on the success of the program. The top part of the template which is labeled in black, is where you would outline the name of the businesses and the first column to your left are the measuring factors to use. It gives a good idea to the viewer, as long as there are updates made to the document on a regular basis, of where certain projects are towards completion. Certainly, you can add or remove measuring factors which are pertinent for, you, for your particular municipality. This template has been made available to you. So just a little bit of an expansion on the CIP tracker and how we utilize it here at the City of Windsor. As shown in the previous slides, there here is an example of how we have utilized the CIP tracker at the City of Windsor. Just to be clear, this is a joint, real-time Excel document shared amongst the Finance and Planning Department. It is updated and the current version is used all the time in case the information is required at any point for reporting purposes to senior management. Just to give a little more information on how we have used the template, I will focus on an example such as a sandwich CIP incentive. You have seen these charts before when we were talking about them. To broaden the explanation and highlight some of the key measures used to produce a notable document, number one, you will see that there are currently two applications which have been approved under this program. Number two, this will measure how many jobs in total are retained, created if there is an expansion in a current business area. The third line item, this measures the expected increase in property assessment as a result of development. The estimate will be changed to reflect the actual increase once it becomes known. And number four, line, uh, the line item here, is most importantly for finance staff. This measures the estimated amount of the grant approval. This will be compared to the actual amount of grant which is then paid. So our final closing remarks. Now that we have come towards the end of the presentation, I will be going back to the original questions which were asked in the beginning of the presentation, if you remember. Number one, first and foremost, what is a CIP? A community improvement plan is a program program or plan which focuses on the maintenance, rehabilitation, development, and redevelopment of target areas. Number two, why develop a CIP program? For a lot of local governments, and specifically for our municipality, the CIPs are used as a tool to gain interest in land development, use and refurbishment of land areas which are in dismal straits. Question three, measuring the benefits of the CIP pro uh, program. Throughout the presentation, we have highlighted some pertinent financial measures such as jobs, private investment, grants approved to gauge the success of some of these initiatives. We are measuring this through a tracking sheet. At this time, I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to the success of this presentation and thank you to the audience for staying involved and participating throughout. A special thanks to the following uh, people, Janice Guthrie for helping me navigate through this project and deliverable. She was there reading and proofreading all of my material. She was patient with me and giving me tips and also telling me straight out where I went wrong in my project material. The City of Windsor Planning Department for giving me insight and a different appreciation into a descriptive part of city and urban living. And also finally, the City of Hamilton and City of Toronto for being available to talk about their respective community improvement plans. Thank you. Now I will take questions. Great. Thank you very much, Aditi. So the first question that we have is, how have you marketed your community involvement plan at the City of Windsor? So, so some of the ways we have our, uh, we have marketed our CIPs, uh, we have links on our website, uh, we've partnered with third party, uh, 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 we've partnered with third party people, uh, 
we have signage on specific properties before uh, b before development was taken uh, taken up, and also through word of mouth through permits and design views. Great, thank you. Next question that we have is. What, in your view, was the most effective or most used incentive used? I also want, wondered if they could also share what the total increase in property assessment was. Would you please repeat the question for us? Absolutely. What, in your view, was the most effective or most used incentive used? And then the follow-up one is if you could share what the total increase in property assessment was. So, uh, so the first uh, the first answer to the first part of the question is the tax is tax increment, and there was a total uh, total total to date uh, close to eighty nine million dollars in in development. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question that we have is why is a grant better than a soft loan? If the businesses is successful, then perhaps they could repay and still have a good outcome. Sometimes you need a grant to get the the investment going, and then after that, the the loans can. Sorry, I'm just trying to read the question here. Sorry, I think I can read it right here. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Okay, this is better actually. Yeah, so exactly like I had said earlier, the the grant usually gets the, the, the development going and then there has to be an incentive for for the development to to continue. Great. And the next question is, could there be a risk of different areas being played off against each other to other to offer larger grants to larger developers, reducing the net benefit to the winner? Uh, that would be where council has the final approval so that they can limit the ability and the amount of the grant. Okay, great. Next question. How did the city raise the funds to cover the grants and loans? Through taxes paid from taxpayers. All right, next question. Um, how does the city of Windsor verify number of jobs retained? We would look at the employment records as a condition of the agreement from the company. All right, great. Um, next question that we have is, um, how do you come up with the expected assessment increase? Is this a partnership that you have with MPAC? So it's done both with MPAC as well as with internal resources. Great. Next question is, who prepared the background documents for the CIP plans, internal or external? Cost to prepare these documents. Is there a cost to prepare these documents? So, uh, uh, so the first part of the question, it's internally uh, by planning staff, by the planning department. And yeah, so that it, it, the costs don't come into to play for that. Okay, great. Um, another question that we have is, uh, sorry, I'm just going to send it to you right now. How did you budget for the grant amounts and what tools did you use to finance them? So the grants are paid through budgeted reserves and they would be planned for. Okay, thank you. Um, another question that we have is what is what was the biggest challenge in developing the CIPs? So the when uh, so the answer to that would be deciding what kind of financial incentive makes it worthwhile 
and still finding a good mix of a grant or a loan. So finding out what is the optimal mix, which is why the tracking sheet is so important to be able to gather the data and analyze the results. Great, thank you. Next question that we have is, um, will you be making any recommended changes to your current CIP program? So council approval calls for a review every five years. We would certainly look at any improvements uh, at that time. So currently we believe the plans have enough flexibility and are serving the intended purpose that there would be no significant changes. Great, thank you. The next question that we have is, do you show these grants on your financial statements? Are the property tax incentive grants locked in at an amount at the beginning of the program, or do they change annually based on the actual property taxes to be paid? Okay, just give me a second with that one. It's a really long question. So again, the question is, do you show these grants on your financial statements? Are the property tax incentive grants locked in an, at an amount at the beginning of the program, or do they change annually based on the actual property taxes to be paid? So the grant would be paid or would be expensed when it was incurred and it's not necessarily reflected as a separate line item within the financial statements. It would be grouped within other expenditures. The amount of the tax incentive fluctuates each year and is recalculated. The base tax or uh, the, the amount that uh, the property owner would be required to pay is held static each year. Great, thank you. Um, next question that I have, I'll send that to you guys. Um, have you had any issues with def defaulting on the interest-free loans and what have you done to collect on them? To date, we have not yet I issued interest-free loans, uh, but it would be brought to council for their directive. Great, thank you. And uh, last question that we have is, does the City of Windsor have a renewable source of funding for their CIP reserves? Does Council approve additional funds or as required or on a regular um, annual basis? At this point, there is no renewable source of funding. Once those reserves have been depleted, uh, Council will have to look at uh, the use and uh, determine whether they want to replenish them or not. Great. Thank you so much, um, Aditi and Janice, for joining us today. Um, so new for 2015 is our participant homework. You can find the worksheet under the Materials tab. Um, in order to maximize your learning from this webinar and apply this knowledge, skill, and information to your job, we urge you to follow these two simple steps. The first is to reflect upon the three key takeaways provided by Aditi today, and if there are any that are not realistic or relevant to you, then write down three key takeaways that are relevant and realistic to you or your municipality's objectives. Now rewrite the three key takeaways into action statements and add specific tasks and completion dates into your calendar as a reminder for completing them. For additional resources on a broad range of topics, please visit MFOA's virtual library. The library is your one-stop shop for policies, RFPs, guides, legislations, and regulations from across the province. Visit www.mfoa.on.ca forward slash library today. Thank you so much and have a great day.